Hey guys, welcome back. So this week's project, project four, actually it's the next project, project four, is all about communication. So it's communication between the Arduino and peripherals that work with the Arduino. And it's also communication between the computer and the Arduino. And your project needs to involve both of those things. So the computer is going to talk to the Arduino. It's going to tell it to do something. The Arduino is going to connect to a peripheral of some kind either to display or to measure, and then it's going to communicate back to the computer. So those are the aspects of this project. So the whole idea is to sort of get used to the notion of different elements of the system communicating with one another over some kind of a communication link. And, uh, and you'll be using at least two different types of communication links in this project. But this is the first of a set of projects that I call surprise me projects, where up until now, I've said, I want you to do this, and I want you to do this, and I want you to do this. And this one is like, I want you to use this idea of communication, but you can do anything you want. You can communicate with any peripheral you wish. You can measure something. You can display something. You can do a lot of, there's a lot of different things. And I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about here in just a moment. So uh, this is the uh, Jupyter Notebook associated with this project, and it's got two different parts. The first part is the code that has to run on the Arduino in order to communicate with the computer. And it involves, in this case, I'm simply reading from uh, input port, analog port zero. So this would be A0 on your Artemis Nano. And uh, what's happening is that the, the uh, Arduino is waiting for the computer to say go, and then when it says go, it says go by sending a character G. So it's literally waiting for this command. The command is the character G. It's waiting for that. And when it gets that, it goes into a loop and it reads from analog port zero. It waits for a little bit. Then it prints the result out to the computer. And then it keeps going until it's done. And then it says end. And then it just goes into an infinite loop, flashing the LED on and off. Okay. And I go through that in detail, how all that works in the notebook. I encourage you to read that. Then on the computer, well, for now, the computer is going to just be us typing into the uh, Arduino IDE serial monitor. So let's just do that and, uh, <clears throat> and see how that works. So I'll pop. What I'm going to do is just uh, copy this code directly from the notebook. And I'm just going to paste it unchanged into the IDE. Okay, there it is. And uh, I actually am going to change one thing. The d loop delay in the notebook is 300 milliseconds, which means it makes about three measurements a second. And I'm trying to turn a uh, potentiometer in the circuit that I have here to show you that the voltage changes. And that's a little too short. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and change this to a second and a half just to give myself some time to actually change that uh, potentiometer. It's just a, a variable resistance, basically. I'm just going to change that variable resistance. Um, and now it looks like it's not connecting. Oh, I know, because I moved the Artemis to a different port. So let me go um, select its USB serial 1450. So, and there it went. OK, well, that's the leftover program. So I'm going to go ahead and compile it again and upload it. There we go. Now it's uploading. So it's using that uh, variable uploader, and it did it. And so now I'm going to open up the, um, let's clear the output. I'm going to open up the serial monitor, and it's going to say hello. And that's because that's what happens after serial begin. It just prints hello. And uh, my um, computer program that I wrote to talk to the thing waits for that hello to start trying to communicate. Um, and I'll show you here, There's a, uh, I wrote another program just as an example. Now here's the thing, I want you guys to understand, I'm not expecting you to write a program that runs on the computer that talks to the Arduino. You can simply use the uh, serial port monitor, this guy, to talk to the Arduino and, um, and ask it to do stuff. And you can imagine that you could write a program on the computer that did the same thing in Python or in C or something else. Um, I will show you an example of a Python program that does that, just so you get a sense of how that works. 
but I'm not expecting you guys to do that necessarily. If you're interested in doing it, if you want to do it, maybe some of you software engineers out there uh, might want to push the software into this thing a little bit harder, and that's fantastic. I would love it if you would do that, but um, but you don't have to. So if you're if you're computer program phobic and you want to just limit the amount of software you have to develop for this project, that's okay. You still have to write code on the Arduino to control your experiment or whatever, but you don't have to write a separate program on the computer that talks to the Arduino. Okay. So what it's doing is waiting for a G. So I'm going to go ahead and type G. I'm going to press enter, and then it's going to start doing its thing. I'm going to go ahead here and turn this potentiometer a little bit, and you'll see that it's changing the number. Okay, let's do that again. G, enter, and I'll dial it all the way down to zero. There it is, zero, and then I'm going to dial it back up. And it got up to 445 before it stopped. But so you, the point is that it's reading... It's reading from that analog port. I was changing a variable resistance to, to vary that number, and, uh, and that's what you were seeing. So that's how that works. Um, I, I will say that reading and writing from the serial port, writing to the serial port is easy. You just do serial print and serial print line. You've been doing that all along. Um, the commands that you haven't been using are things like serial available. And that basically is a function that tells, are there characters in the buffer from the computer ready to read? Serial.read reads, reads a single character from that uh, port, and then um, you can check to see it, what particular character that is, and then go do something based on that. So you could imagine having multiple commands. In fact, let me show you right now an example with multiple commands. So... Um, Actually, before I get to that, we need to talk about I squared C and SPI. So more on that right now. Okay, if I just Google I2C and SPI, <clears throat> I get a bunch of, uh, there's a bunch of hits here. Um, I'm just going to grab one. I happen to see difference between I2C and SPI. Um, it's some random person's blog post, but... The point is, it gives some pictures, and I don't have to draw them that way, okay? So, um, uh, I2C, I squared C, is a two-wire, it was a, it's been around for quite a while, but uh, it's it's a, called a two-wire interface, where you can have a, uh, and unfortunately the terminology is a little bit outdated, um, they have a, element called the master, which should usually be the Arduino or the microcontroller. And there are these slaves, which are basically peripherals that need to be that that need to be controlled. And so the idea is there's a data line and a clock line. The master uh, runs the clock and uh, and the data line at the beginning, it puts out a signal that says uh, which device it wants to talk to. It sets out an address. And all the slaves sit there and listen. Who, are, who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? And when they get the address, each slave has its own unique address, 0 to 255. And whichever slave get matches the address will then respond with some kind of a response. So it's basically the master talks, just one device. That device recognizes its address and sends data back to the master. So we have here an analog to digital converter, a digital to analog converter. Um, maybe that's a temperature controller. I don't know. Whatever. There are different things here that are connected to this bus, and they can all, with only two wires, you can connect up to 255 different things. Of course, they're all sharing those same two wires, so only only one pair can talk at a time: the master and one of the slaves. So that's a limitation. If you have too many things on the bus and you need to transfer a lot of information, you're going to run out of run out of bandwidth, but um, that's how I squared C works. Then SPI is a uh, serial peripheral interface. It's meant to be more of a point-to-point -point thing where you've got a single master and a single slave. It's a simpler protocol. The coding is simpler, um, but it takes four wires and it's limited in the number of things that can talk. If you only need to talk to one thing, then great. That's a great way to do it. Um, but it does have some disadvantages relative to 
I squared C, it does allow for a much greater data rate, and that can be important in, in certain situations as well. So, and there's some discussion in this article about the advantages and disadvantages of the various um, various types of protocols. Then the other protocol we'll be using is uh, RS-232 or UART, um, which is just a standard serial port. So, um, and I'm going to show you an example of that. You've been using that all along. You basically have, um, <clears throat> oh, there's a Sparkfront article, okay, that, uh, well, that's a, that's a little more complicated than we need it to be. But ba basically, uh, in, a, in a universal asynchronous receiver transmitter, it's a, you take two wires. One is a transmit where you send data out to the peripheral device. And one's a receive where you receive data back from the peripheral device. So this is used by the Artemis Nano to communicate with the computer. And, uh, and you can use it as well to communicate with other things. It turns out the Nano has, in addition to the serial port that connects to the computer, it's also got another one, uh, a separate hardware serial port. Let's see if I save that picture here. There it is right there. So if I open this guy up and uh, let's make it a little bit bigger so we can see better. Um, these two pins right here, pin 9 and 10 on the Artemis Nano, are transmit and receive. And you uh, use those guys by addressing uh, the serial, serial 1 instead of just serial. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to take the program we just developed and I'm going to just add serial1.begin, 9600. And, uh, and what I'm going to do is simply add down here, I'm going to echo everywhere we print, uh, let's see, I'm just going to add serial1.printline value decimal. And echo those numbers out to the serial one port. And then what I'll do is get on the oscilloscope and show you guys what that looks like on the oscilloscope. Does that make sense? Uh, all right. Okay, so here we are. Um, let me clear this out <clears throat> so you can uh, watch this at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and pop over to the oscilloscope. I've got the oscilloscope running here, and it's in. Uh, a trigger mode where it only shows a trace when um, there's a new information. So it's frozen the last trace on the screen here. Um, I could, let's see, let me, let me just um, leave it like it is for the moment. I want to go ahead and type a G in here and then I'm going to get ready with the screwdriver to turn this variable resistor and then I'm going to hit go. And there it goes, okay, and I'm going to be adjusting the numbers, and you can see that the characters are changing. And you can see the characters are changing because the spacing between the highs and the lows changes. So let me describe for you what's going on here. Um, the, uh, let, actually, what's the easiest way to do this? Uh, hang on one second. Okay, so I've I did a screen capture of the oscilloscope trace and put it up here. Um, this thing is called a start bit. That's where the voltage first drops, and it just tells the serial port I'm getting ready to communicate. And then it's got a series of highs and lows which correspond to other bits. It's sending eight bits at a time, and then when it's done with those eight bits, it sends another start bit. So um, the last number it sent was a 598. So this is going to be the 5, this is going to be the 9, this is going to be the 8. It's kind of like that. So the, the, uh, you get 8 bits of highs and lows, and then there's another start bit, and then you get 8 more bits of highs and lows, and then there's another start bit, and then you get 8 more bits of highs and lows. So if, you, uh, if I actually turn down, let me turn down the time base here. So we'll get, uh, let's make it, what, one millisecond per division? That was half a millisecond per division. So let's go to two milliseconds per division. Then you'll really see all the data compressed here in a short time. Let's go ahead and run the thing again. 
and as the data starts coming in, you'll see a much more compressed uh, bunch of highs and lows, but there you can see the whole data packet. So, um, cool, it's sending in uh, 855, 853, 854, and so on. The last three, uh, each packet is one number, 854, 853, it's three characters, and it's coming in as a series of highs and lows. Um, anyway, that's how RS-232 works. The beautiful thing is you don't have to get into the nitty-gritty details too much. You can just use serial read and serial write, and it will take care of getting the characters for you. Um, the other thing I should show you is what happens when you change the bit rate. That's actually useful. Let's, uh, let's look at that. I'm going to switch back here, and then let's change this from uh, 9600. Let's change it to... Uh, what's another bit rate that we can use here? Let me pop uh, 115200. I'm not going to change serial to 115200 because I don't want to have to reset my serial port on the computer. But I can change it on the serial 1 port, which is the one that I'm watching on the oscilloscope, and you'll see what happens there. I'm not going to change the time base. So you'll see the same time base we were just looking at. And let me flip back over now to the dot cam. Okay, and uh, I will. It, it says hello. Okay, I'm going to type G. And it's going to start sending. Now look at that. All three characters now are getting sent in less than a millisecond. So before it was taking you know, 8 or 10 milliseconds to send all those characters, and now they're all getting sent. So that higher bit rate means we're sending data much more quickly. So if you have a problem where you've got to send a lot of data quickly, you can always up the baud rate for that. Let me turn up the time base on the oscilloscope here. Let's go to uh, 50 microseconds per division now. That's a heck of a lot faster. And let's see what that looks like, if we can now resolve those bits. There we go. Now it's, uh, we're back, it looks a little bit like it did before, but notice the time scale of these divisions is now only 50 microseconds before it was 500 microseconds. So we're like on the order of 10 times faster, which, which kind of makes sense when you're thinking about those numbers. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is, uh, and we'll talk about this more in class, but there is a, uh, one of the devices. So I've got a bunch of different I squared C, SPI, Etc. devices, peripherals that you can choose for this project. And I'll, I'll formulate a list of them and so you have an idea of what's available. One of them is a, this joystick, which, is, which uses I squared C. So you can actually hook up multiple joysticks if you want to. I don't know that I have enough for everybody to use three joysticks or something, but if, but if you need, if you, you come up with something where two would be useful, we can certainly uh, think about that. But anyway, uh, if you look at the joystick, there's, an ex there's some example programs. And there was, um, I see, those are Arduino examples. Let's see, hang on a second. Uh, I want to find, well, darn it, where was that? Okay, hang on. Okay, it was at the, uh, I, I found it now. If you, if you go to the SparkFun product site, there's this intriguing Python example code. And you click on that Python example code and you see the snake game written in Python, of all things. And, uh, but the unfortunate thing is it's meant to be used on a, a device, probably like a Raspberry Pi or something where you can actually run Python right on the device that has the I squared C connection. So, uh, so down here they're using this SM bus library and they're talking directly on the I squared C bus. So that's no good. I can't run that on my Mac because my Mac doesn't have an I squared C bus. But then I got to thinking, wait a minute, I could write uh, an Arduino program that talks to the uh, joystick with I squared C and then uses the serial port to send the data back to the computer and the computer could run the game on the, the Mac or the PC. So that's what I did. I ported the Wormy program, wormy.py. Here you see my initials there. I've ported it to SparkFun joystick over the serial port. So what this does is it, it works exactly like the one that's on SparkFun's GitHub page, 
except now it's calling this get joystick uh, function and I wrote a little library that uses the serial port to connect it reads data from the serial port and it gets the it gets the X the Y and the button state from the joystick so let me uh, let's go grab, actually I'll run the Arduino IDE again and just show you how simple the program is that, uh, that talks to the joystick. And for all of these peripherals, there's likely to be some kind of a, uh, let's see, it's called Serial Joy. Okay, so I basically took the demo. When you install this, the library for the um, if you go to Manage Libraries, and then you type in Joystick. So, um, let's see. There should be a SparkFun Joystick here. SparkFun, Quick, we're using the Quick I squared C interface, and notice it says it's installed. Um, if you, and this this is the library. Um, anyway, it comes with a bunch of examples. Actually, I can point that out here. So if I if I uh, go to examples at the bottom, there's the joystick. Every time you install a library of code for peripherals, it's probably going to come with some examples. And I would say one of the first things you should do is to go ahead and load up um, the example and try it out. Make sure the device is working correctly. All it does is it prints out left, right, up, and down, depending on um, the, the condition of the joystick. Okay. So what I did is I just uh, I created a little joystick structure here. I made a little function that goes out and gets the X, the Y, and the B. And then this guy just, it, look, it's very similar to the function we just saw. It checks to see if there are any commands. There's a command called Q, which in my mind means query. So we're going to query the joystick. So it reads the joystick and prints out the X, the Y, and the B. Of course, notice I'm using printf, so this code will only work with the Artemis Nano. It won't work with the regular Arduino. It also has a G and an S. G stands for go, and S means stop. And that turns it on free run. Free run, it just goes and, and keeps sampling. So here, here's how you test it. In fact, when you write your code um, for your project, you, you don't have to write a program on the, on the computer that talks to the thing. You can just use the serial monitor. You can also use the serial plotter, which I'll show you here in just a second. So um, Wait a minute, it says hello, but this program says ready. That means I've still got the old program on there. So I've got to compile this thing and upload it to the, uh, to the Nano. So let's do that first. Come on. I don't know why it always takes a while the first time. Maybe I, I might have to edit this out. There, it did it. Okay, it's loaded. Okay, now, now it says ready. So if I say Q, it reads, it just reads the joystick. If I say G, it goes out and reads a lot. If I say S, it stops. So G and S are how you get it to start and stop. Um, let me show you a fun trick. If I go to tools and choose serial plotter, now I, I, I can still type and send messages. I say go, and there it's going. So now I can fiddle with the joystick, and it's actually plotting the values um, instead of uh, just printing them to the screen. So that's kind of cool. So that's a fun way to grab some data, see what it is you're measuring, and plot it right there in the Arduino IDE. Now one thing I will say, if you do write a program on the computer that talks to the Arduino, you got to quit out of the IDE because it's hogging the serial port, and it won't let any other programs talk to it. So I got to quit the Arduino IDE, or at least close all the windows. Then I'm going to go back and show you the pro the program. I just took the worm program 
from the website. And everywhere it was talking to the I2C bus, I changed it to go out and go to the serial port to call this, uh, sorry, call my serial joy library to talk to the Arduino, say, give me some data. It would send, and notice what it's doing. When it wants to get a joystick update, it sends a queue. So that's just going out, telling the thing, give me one number, and then it goes and pulls that data back. It does a read of the uh, serial port. It splits that string that it gets back on commas and converts those to integers, and then returns a data structure, a little uh, dictionary in Python, which we learned about last week, and uh, and then sends it back to the worm program. And the worm program now, um, let's see uh, if I type joy here. It's doing data is get joystick. It pulls that into a data structure and then it's looking. Is x less than 450 or is x uh, is 557 less than x or and so on. So it's it's looking at the joystick values. And the other thing it does is it looks at the button on the joystick. Uh, where does that happen? When it's checking to see if the keyboard is pressed, I'm letting you press the joystick keyboard. I know it's in here somewhere. Check for key press. It'll check the joystick and see if the joystick is pressed. So there's a little button on the joystick you can push down. Here, by the way. Here's the joystick. Here's the nano. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this game and you can see what it's like. I'm not very good at it. <clears throat> So if I type Python wormy, oops, it doesn't, oh, uh, I have to change the serial port address because I switched the serial port. So let's do that. Um, it's now 1450, I think. And actually, there's a little test serial port um, program here that you can also run. Let's run that just to make sure that works. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, Python test serial. Yep, so it goes out and it uh, measures x, y, and b. So now I should be able to run Wormy. Let's try that. Okay, I got to push the button on the, uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to try to get the guy. Oh, got him. Oh, ah! Oh, okay, I went backwards. Darn it. Okay, you get the idea. The point is you can uh, you, you can play this game. So um, I'll quit this now. Okay. The other thing you have to remember, if you do write a program that uses the serial port, you've got to be sure to close the port. Because if you forget to close the port, then um, when you go back to try to program the Arduino, it's not going to be able to program because the closed the port's still going to be open and it's still going to be owned by your Python program. Um, in fact, if you try to rerun the program, it might not open because it won't be able to get to the port either. So you have to um, restart your computer or, or something, log out and log back in. I don't know. Do something to clear that port. And uh, okay. Well, I think that's all I have for you tonight. Um, we'll talk about this more in class when we get there on Wednesday.